What's up guys, Jacob here. Today I'm going to show you how to record vocals in FL Studio. So the first thing you need to do is get set up. You need to get everything plugged in and going. So I've already got my Apollo Twin interface hooked up. Now some interfaces, you don't need to have a separate power cord for them. They'll be powered by USB and also connect to your computer all with one cord. This one does need a plug, so I've already got it all plugged in and lined up. And then after that, you need to go to the settings in FL, to your audio settings, and make sure your interface is selected. So I've already got Universal Audio Thunderbolt selected. Now once you've done that, you wanna to go to channel one in the mixer to receive my mic audio right here. So with channel one selected, I go over here to the input settings and I go down to Universal Audio Thunderbolt, which is my interface, and select channel one, mic channel one. And now you can see I'm getting audio. Yay, I've got it set up. So now I'm seeing sound. The track is already armed, but I can disarm it this way. Now it's armed again. I can arm multiple tracks to record, like so. Another very important thing to set correctly is the input gain for your mic. Gain meaning the volume or how much sound is being allowed in through your interface. And on the Apollo, it's really easy. You just click preamp and then you change the level for channel one and that's gonna let more or less sound in. Really, I would say just don't be afraid to record at low volumes, um, but don't record too low either. Just kind of use your ears and find a good balance and you'll figure it out. Another thing you might wanna add is a little bit of reverb so you can hear some space while you're recording, while you're tracking your vocals. You might not, it's a preference thing, but if you do, you can go to the plugin database here. Just add something simple. I can just use the internal fruity reverb. Just add that there to that slot. So now that we got that going, just gotta make sure I have a count in for me. I do, one, two, three. I've got record armed. Now I can press space bar and start singing. Never, 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 never. Never, bet you never, never, bet you never, never, bet you never, never, bet you never. It's cool, I'm digging it. Now, let's say this was multiple takes of the same section and I wanted to mute some of the other takes. Maybe try to find the best one. I can do that. I can use the mute tool. And let's say I want to just listen to track one. Or solo track two. Never, never, never. I can also drag these around in a lot of different ways. Of course, I can move them across the project. If I come down to the end of the window here and drag this way, now I'm actually resampling it and changing the speed of it. I really like that. That's one of the things that makes FL cool is once you've recorded audio, you don't need to like you know, turn time stretching on or something, it's literally already ready to go. So right after I've recorded, I can just start manipulating that audio and getting creative. Now, if I did want to keep all three tracks, because I do like the layer, I actually think, you know, if I was gonna turn this into a full song, I'd probably do that, because I do like those three vocal parts together. And obviously, you know, I kind of purposely did it that way. But what I'm doing now is going into these three channels and changing them so that they're not all going to track one, now they're gonna to go to different tracks. So when I play back. So now you can see there's nothing going to track one. So now if I wanted to you know, change the balance, do a little preliminary mixing on these three vocal takes, I could do that. Something like that. Obviously, this isn't a final track or anything, so I'm not gonna go super far into mixing and going farther than this point of just tracking the vocals. But, you know, there are a couple things you might wanna do right off the bat. Something you'll do that's kind of a rule of thumb is do a little preliminary EQing for your vocal, most likely taking a lot of the low end out because you don't want that competing with your bass or your kick. Uh, one of my favorite EQs and just favorite plugins in general, just bundles of great plugins, is FabFilter. So, you know, say I wanted to add a little low cut here, 
just to get some of that out of the way. And this is something you might tweak later, you know, depending on the frequency range of your bass and your kick, you may want it a little bit higher, you may want it lower. That's one of the cool things about mixing actually is that it's really just all about your ears. Music is all about just using your ears and your own judgment. So you can just play with this stuff. So just a little review of the gear that I've used in this video. I've got an AKG C414, great mic. Then I've got the Apollo Twin Universal Audio interface over there. And then I was also using some Fab Filter plugins. I can't recommend Fab Filter enough. Um, their plugins are go-to for just your basics for me, like EQ, compression, doing sidechain like that. They're really great. If you are a first-time buyer, you're getting an interface and a mic for the first time, some great choices to consider, some very popular choices, are the Focusrite 2i2 two-channel interface. I've actually got an older one at home that I still use that works great, and a newer generation too. They sound really good. They're easy to use, great entry-level interface. Then there's also, for microphones, the Shure SM7. B, a classic, so many hit records have been recorded with it. It's a go-to for anybody, really, at any level. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Click here for more videos like this one, and go to sweetwater.com for all your music instrument pro audio needs.